Hi, this is Brandon. Today, we're going to render this character bust inside of Maya using Arnold. All right, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have our texture assigned. Select your entire model, go to color, hit the checkerboard box, select file. Over here, we need to locate the actual file. We're just gonna load the albedo. If it doesn't show up, check this icon here for texture. Beautiful. Now make sure you're in the rendering tab up here in the upper left hand corner under Arnold. In fact, I'm just going to tear that off. I'm going to go to lights, area light. Using R, make it much larger. The larger the light, the more even and consistent your light will be. So to display what the light is actually doing, go to open Arnold render view. Now for anything else to show up, we need to uncheck normalize under the light property. Now if nothing shows up, hit play. All right, there we are. Here, let's move these around. All right. Now depending on your computer setup and your CPU, turn this off if you're not using it. That'll keep your, keep your CPU from going too hot, too crazy. Depending on the size of your model, how close the light is, you may need to adjust the intensity. I'm gonna set mine to two. I'm also gonna set these samples to five. All right, now I'm gonna duplicate this. Control D, select E, hold down J to rotate. I'm gonna select this other one. Duplicate that, control D, rotate holding down J. I'm basically just gonna build myself a little softbox here. For this particular lighting arrangement, I want to have even consistent lighting. Beautiful. All right, let's test this. Not too bad so far. Go to render, render settings under common. The first very important thing to render a transparent background, image format needs to be a TIFF. No other file type will work. I believe default is EXR. We need a TIFF. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna use a perspective camera and I'm going to set my image resolution to be 1920 square. I'm doing square because I don't need a lot of extra space on the side. I'm going to compile this in Photoshop later anyhow, and the resolution I'm going to set to 300. This might be a little bit high, so if your CPU ends up chugging at all, you can feel free to set this lower. Under Arnold Render, I upped the diffuse and the specular to three. So these first three boxes I have set at three. And we can leave this open if you like to make any adjustments if needed. Test this. Very nice. This is a real-time render, so anytime I move this, it will re-render, and it gives you the percentage down here at the bottom, the progress. I'm going to pause this for a moment. Now, something else I've done is I've selected my perspective camera, and then under focal length, I upped this from 35 to 80. This will take out some of that lens distortion that comes with the perspective camera. Now, when you increase this focal length, it will also change the zoom of the camera. Okay, and I'm gonna frame this so I have a little bit of room on top and bottom, but not too much. I'm gonna pause this because once I know what my shot is, as long as I don't move anything, I know what my shot's gonna be. Go to render, render sequence. Now this will take just a second to cook. All right, this turned out quite small. I would like that to be a little bit larger. In the Arnold render view, I'm going to hit F to make sure to frame that full size. And I can mouse wheel back just to check this. Hit F to bring it back. And now I can frame this accordingly. All right, I'm gonna stop the preview and I'm going to render, render sequence. Let that cook. All right, that looks much better. Now I could set up a render sequence and I could automate how to get several angles of this. But for time's sake, I found the fastest way to do it is just literally to rename my image. If I render again, it's going to overwrite this image. Now I'm just gonna add a zero here and just keep track that my zeros are my continued renders and I will continue to renumber those as I go. Okay, I'm gonna change my angle, get my preview set up, a nice front view. I'm gonna try not to get too much of an up the nose shot or down the head shot. I'm gonna try to get that as level as I can. Looks good, stop this. Thank you, autosave. Render, render sequence. Let this cook a minute. All right, that took 53 seconds. That's not too bad. Now let's double check on my files. 
All right, see, now my original image is still there, and this one has gone back to punk painter just underscore one. So I'm going to rename this to O2. Again, I could set up a render sequence, I could set up a turntable, I could animate this, but I only need a few images, so I'm just going to manually do this. It is just faster in setup. All right, let's preview this. Still want my in and out to be the same. Okay, stop preview, render, render sequence, let this cook. All right, a minute, four seconds, not too terrible. Again, if this is too taxing on your system, if your CPU is running at 100%, set these settings down. You can change your resolution size. You can change the, I would change the resolution from 300 to maybe 100, or you can change the actual pixel resolution as well. You could also in your lighting, go back and change the samples and bring that down a little bit as well. All right, again, I'm gonna go and rename my newly rendered image. This will be 03. All right, I'm going to preview this again. I want to get a nice angled beauty shot, giving enough room on the top and the bottom. All right, looks good. Can hear my CPU pushing a little bit. All right, 59 seconds, not too bad. Now let's go ahead and rename this. All right, I also want to get a nice side view. All right, a minute nine, a little longer that time, not too bad. All right, so next, you know the drill, go and rename the image. This will be 04. And something I also like to always do is check this against my concept art. In fact, this concept was done by Justin Booth. You can find him at Justin Booth Art on Instagram. He's got some cool stuff. He's a super cool guy. Go check him out. Check my preview. Check it against the concept. All right, let's do one more render. Turn off my preview. Render sequence. Let her cook. All right, next we're going to set up a new material to add a wireframe. That's going to minimize this a little so I can see a little better. I'm going to select my entire model. Let's zoom back so I can see what's going on. Rid of our render settings. All right, and actually I need to select the actual geometry and then go to the very furthest tab on the right. Sometimes you have to mouse wheel over. And I'm gonna set this to AI wireframe. Now this is gonna show up just as gray, but under fill color with the checkerboard box, select file, re-navigate to your albedo base color. And let's go ahead and preview this. And now I have my model with a wireframe and the color. However, I have all this triangulation. I do not want those triangles in there. That's not how I've set my model up. I have quads. So again, select the geometry under that material on edge type from triangles, change this to polygons. Beautiful. All right, let's get another nice preview here. And then we'll pause the preview, render sequence, let this one cook. Four seconds, we have a new record. All right. And just for good measure, I'm going to rename this one as well. This will be 05. Let's see how that looks. Oh, beautiful. All right, now that I've rendered these out, I can assemble this in Photoshop and have a nice little rendered portfolio piece. Something else I can also do is under Renderer, I can change this to Arnold, and it will show my model with a wireframe here. And we're just going to compile these to make a nice little portfolio piece. All right, I'm just going to drop these in. All right, I'm going to add another layer, put it at the bottom. I find myself a nice medium gray. Yeah, something about there is not too bad. I have a darker gray below it. I'm going to use the gradient tool. I'm going to drag down and shift to straighten it out. I'm going to grab these, get my move tool. I'm actually going to enlarge my canvas size. Inches? Who works in inches? All right. Certainly larger than I need it, but I can crop that later. And with this gradient down here, looking good. I also want to bring in my concept art. I think I want to put my wireframe over here. I typically like these facing inwards. And really, just want to arrange these in a way that looks nice. Put his nose in the corner, do like a Blair Witch thing over here. I like that, actually. That I think that works better. And you know what? Let's uh, scale this down a little bit. Just sit about the same size. And in the background, you are hearing one of my lovely cats. That's our Persian. His name is Panooch. And when he sleeps, he snores. And it's adorable. There he goes. Now, I definitely want to focus on the presentation here. Presentation can absolutely make or break your piece. Can't even spell my own name today.
I'm going to go and double check my poly count. All right, try count is 6960 apparently. After taking these renders out of Maya using Arnold with a transparent background, dropping them in, got uh, something I can feel proud to put on my portfolio. All right, well, that's about the bare bones of it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.